we thank Allah today and uh, we are sincerely grateful to Him. Many of us, we are following what is happening in the world now. Perhaps most of us are confused. We actually don't know what is happening. The only thing we know is Russia is fighting Ukraine. If they ask many of us, we just don't know. We only know that they are fighting. Perhaps, let me briefly summarize this. We witnessed the same type of fights in Syria. We witnessed the same type of fights in Yemen. We witnessed the same type of fights in Iraq. We witnessed it in Libya. And even in Nigeria, perhaps none of us might not know we are actually witnessing something like that. Perhaps that's not well defined. And that's why we didn't know we are actually passing through the same type of fight. And what is that fight? In brief, some people believe that they are the owner of the world and everything they want, they must get it. In the two sides. Perhaps when there is time, I will actually explain the two sides. Two sides is one. There are some group of organizations that call themselves NATO, and they believe that there is one world now, and there shouldn't be a competitor. And there is another one who believes now that E2 is there. You are looking down on me, and that is Russia. I want to tell the world that I'm back to base. Perhaps those are the summary. If you don't also don't stop, the similar thing happened in 1962 when the US, when Russia, they actually wanted to take over Cuba in 1962 because they are friends. And America said, no, you are, this country is too close to my country. I cannot allow my enemy to have a base behind my door, my backyard. America said, no. In fact, the Russians, they were coming with everything on the sea. On getting to Cuba, they discovered that America, they have covered they have covered Cuba with a lot of war arsenals. And what did they do? To prevent World War III in 1962, they turned back. And the same thing America wanted to do this time around too. They, they led a particular group of countries called NATO, North Atlantic Treaty. And they said they want to take over Ukraine. And Ukraine is the next stop. It's a younger brother of Russia. And Russia to say no, we can't have a space here. We will take over our people. I don't do that for us Muslims. For us to actually understand what is actually on the ground. And the question now is of the two or the three things story that we did, the one about Syria, Yemen, Iraq, Libya, and probably Nigeria, and the one in Cuba, and recently the one in Ukraine, the three of them, it is human rights that have been trapped upon. It is human rights that other people who feel that human rights, it is definition they give to human rights. And that is why my topic today is human rights. And I explain it to me, human rights. Where did the idea of human rights begin? And what is the Islamic point of view of human rights? Is it achievable or is it merely an impossible dream? And what should we most do to promote human rights? Perhaps we might not have enough time to discuss this. But wherever Allah can us, that is where we will be. Throughout history, man has struggled to be free from oppression from his fellow man. When you find our answers, you remember, oppressed by the Israel, said Namusa alayhi salatu wa salam, let them out of Egypt. Then thousands of years later, there are some group from the conquerors who are really militant Catholic fundamentalists. They drove the Muslim and the Jews out of Spain. Who can forget the fall of Granada? Perhaps many of us do not know the history of Islam in Spain. That Muslim, we were ruling Spain for about 1,000 years. Before some people now gathered and they decided to send us out from Spain. They said the day they took over Spain, that there were blood, it was flowing like water, like flood in the city of Granada that the way they killed and slaughtered the Muslims out of Spain that year. But more recently, our Palestinian brothers and sisters were being driven from their homes to make way for the state of Israel. 
have to remember that in the people define. Indeed, the old story of human rights is linked to the story of refugees and minority groups around the world. 200 years ago, lots of French peasants, they overthrew their monarch and declared a republic. You remember, liberty, equality, and fraternity were the slogans of the French Revolution. In North America, a civil war gave back to the Constitution of the United States with its Bill of Rights, and it took another two centuries before Martin Luther King won the same right for the blacks in America. After the Second World War, the United Nations, on the 10th of December 1948, after all, set out the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it proclaimed the right of life, liberty, and security of persons, to freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, association, speech, expression, political association, and so on. It includes the right to be presumed innocent until proving guilty, to travel from a whole country at will and return at will, and so forth. It sets out in broad terms what basic human rights must be safeguarded in all countries. If we look at the attitude of the Western government today, and some views of Islamic government concerning human rights, the record is disappointing. The observance of human rights is based on evidence that is when it suits them. It is okay as long as it doesn't hurt their own human rights their own economic interests. Today, today's only superpower, that is the United States of America, is not even subtle in its disregard for fair dealing with other nations. I have to remember the story of said when they decided that they were going to attack Libya. When they decided they were going to attack Iraq, they were telling us lies and lies and lies and lies to say this is what they have. It is why they killed millions of people and they stole their gold and oil. It is then now discovered that at the end of the day, there was no weapon of mass destruction. And they actually deceitively, they linked them to September 9 11 as if the Iraqi people, they are the one who masterminded the 9 11 uh, destruction. But alliance. But it does not matter who gets lost, how many lives are lost, and how many, how many millions. Have to suffer ill health, injustice, or early death. As long as policy serves their own advantage, it serves their own self interest, there is no room for moral or ethical consideration. And also, the policy of successive British government to sell out to any cruel dictator who has the means to pay for it, despite the customer's human rights record, while it we hear some of their parties that when they are in opposition, they will tell you that they will not sell weapons to countries that are not doing well. And when they also have the power to take over, and you see them selling the same war, the same war equipment to other countries, you ask them, why are you doing this? They will say, hey, well, you know, we don't sell, other countries will sell for them. And that is why we have to sell, we control what we sell. We also boost our economy. Meanwhile, before they got there, they are always accusing those who are there that they do not live well, that they are supporting people who are killing others. The meaning of that is that all of them, the seeds, the seeds, and the more seeds in Islam. Justice is not there only for the convenience of Muslims alone. It is not based on experience of them to be observed or ignored as when we please. We Muslims are not God's choosing people. What I mean by that is that it's not that we are better than any other person. Everybody that is conscious of Almighty Allah, we are equal before Almighty Allah. An offense committed by a Muslim, even an imam, is the same offense that is committed by a non Muslim, and the same punishment will be better on them, not because it's part like the way in which we used to have selected judgment that is based on the interest of a particular nation. We Muslims are not God's chosen people with one law for ourselves and another law for others. We must earn our way into Allah's plan with efforts and sacrifice every day. No prophet died for our sin. 
Muslim, we should know that. The meaning is that you will earn, you will work for whatever you want to be in the year after. Or like some people who are deceiving the child that somebody has died for their sin, and because of that, they can continue to destroy in the name of faith that they are sinless. And each of us carries our own body. We are urged to stand up at this oppression. So often today, so often, today's victims can be tomorrow's oppressor. I do not even know. Even when we come to Nigeria, you remember when the current political party that they are ruling in this country, before they came to power, we knew what happened. And when they are in power, we are seeing what is happening. All of this, we don't need anybody to tell us the story. We have been part of it and we are seeing it. But Allah has told us that here I am the dinner and who knew for what we need to see what they are doing. Wallahi the Ramad Kuchar has come in and last and it is the Lord who has come in Takwa, what the Allah in the last of the year, the Lord. Allah says that Oji who believe stand out family for Allah as witness of fear dealing. And let not your hatred of a people lead you to act unjustly towards them. Be just, that is next to piety. And fear Allah, for Allah is well acquainted with all what you do. Their brothers and sisters in Islam. Islam teaches us absolute equality toward the law. A woman belonging to a high and a noble family was arrested for stealing. She was brought before the Abu Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it was recommended that she might despair the punishment she might despair the punishment because of her status. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and I quote, He said, the nation that lived before you were destroyed by Allah because they were they punished the common man and let their dignities go unpunished for their crimes. I swear by the one who holds my life in his hand that even if my daughter Fatima had committed the same crime, I will have cut off her hand. That was our own problem. And that is not what the leaders of today want to do. Perhaps the Islamic, human, the Islamic view on human rights is best explained in that historic last book of our Lord Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was part of as the, the last sermon. I will not read it all in full, but here are some of the points inside the footbar of the prophets. And I quote the word of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Oh, baby, let me an attentive here. For I know not whether after this year I shall ever be among you again. Therefore, listen to what I am saying to you carefully. And take this word to those who could not be present here today. O people, just as you regard this month, this day, this city as sacred, so regard the life and property of every Muslim as a sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Hurt no one so that no one hurts you. Remember that you will meet your Lord and that he will reckon your deeds. Further on, our prophet continues, said, Oh, people, you have still rights over your women, but you also have rights over you. If they are tied by your rights, then to them you don't the right to be fair and clothed in kindness. Do treat your women well and be kind to them, for they are your partners and committed heavens. Every Muslim is the brother of the daughter. Our own brother, all are equal. No one has superiority over others except the right and the good action. Of course, those were the words of our noble prophet Muhammad. <laughs> Many of us today, do we think of those people that we have the right over them and they have right over us? The prophet Muhammad delivered our own international declaration of human rights 1,360 years before the United Nations did it. Soon after the Hijra, he also proclaimed in Medina the world's first written, first written constitution in which the right of minorities were guaranteed. It's reported to have said in one hadith that whoever kills a dhimmi, a non Muslim living under our protection, he will not even smell the fragrance of paradise. That is to say that a Muslim 
you do not have the right to kill a non-Muslim. The prophet says, he who kill a non-Muslim, for what just comes, the prophet says, Allah will deprive him. Ordinary smell of paradise, thoughtless of enemy. He said, no matter the work which you do, I do not know where they can see what they see before they begin to kill and kill and kill and some of them in the name of Islam. Let us therefore make certain that when non-Muslims live within our midst, they are shown respect and fairness and amazed to feel welcome and safe. Our noble ancestors were the protectors of those who were persecuted in Europe. That is why perhaps we do not know that in major cities like Istanbul, like in Fez, like in Cairo, they still have Jewish and Christian voters up to today. Because when they are being persecuted in Europe, do not forget those areas, they are close to Europe. And that is why you see them in Morocco, in Fez, in Egypt, because they can quickly run and have a kind of protection there. And today, many of them they are even misusing that opportunity that Islam has given to them. In the time of our beloved Prophet, in the use of Abyssinia, a wife that he just seen gave protection to the first Muslim, to the first Muslim refugee from Mecca. It is also an Islamic duty to protect non Muslims living in our land. Perhaps we remember that our Muslims, how they went to Ethiopia, where today in Africa, where we have four set of Muslims, it is in Ethiopia because of that help which they gave to the Muslim. If the Muslim were given help by Christians, was one of the Christians also to give help to the Muslim. Human rights in Islam, it implies an obligation. And this is the other point that so often in life, today's victim becomes tomorrow's oppressor. The Jewish people that suffered unspeakable cruelty before and during the Second World War, but today somehow they are they seem to have forgotten those lessons in their dealings with our brothers in Palestine. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we must be must not see human rights as mere just an imaginary idea out there, but somewhere that concerns someone else. Human rights actually begin with us individually. It is intimately connected with our idea of the human, of the community life, and of our family. How we see ourselves, we can all start by treating our wives, our children, and our colleagues, and the people who are under us. We can start by treating, by treating them better. We should know that the mere fact that you bear this loving thing, the mere fact that you come from among the Muslims, you are an ambassador of Islam. Perhaps many of us don't so. Whatever you do in your office, if there are no Muslims there, they will forget your name. They will say, ah, these Muslims, they are not good people, man. Because, because of you, you have given all of us bad name. And if a, good, if a Muslim is doing something right and is doing it well, when they leave there, they will tell you, I do not know that Muslims are good like this. You do not have any other name again. The name you carry is the name of all of us Muslim. Not just Islam. They will, whatever you do now becomes a reference point. And this is now we have to understand that what is happening in the world today, perhaps all of us should open our eyes and we should begin to ask Allah to guide us to right. There are so many at times that we follow information which we get. But the prophet, the Quran has told us that in Yahu Pass will be number in part of the That when you have an information, go and find out. Many of us, our brain has been intoxicated. We do not think of Islam again. All our gods, to them, as the ruler, I will not be part of them. They believe that whatever they read, whatever they hear, either from the media, from the television, or they hear from their source, that is the only thing they will believe. They will not even think what is God's judgment. What is Allah's stand on this thing that I want to do? Quran tells us that you should ask the people who have knowledge if you do not know. We are living in a very confused world where you will follow a particular road that you do not know where it leads to. Where somebody will have an interest and he will drive you to follow his own interest without you knowing what you are doing until when the result comes, you will know that you have oppressed people in a very wrong way. Let us be careful. 
the way we listen. Let us be careful the way we take news. Let us be careful the way we talk. Many of us do not know what we are saying. We are not saying it because we want to be seen. We have known what we are doing. If you abandon the right that Allah has given to you, Wallahi Yadid. Allah said, In the child you gave to me, that if you misbehave, you refuse to listen to what Allah is telling you. Allah said that if he wishes, he will remove all of you. I will replace you with a better, with a better creature, and they will do better things for you. And that time, those people will now come. They will follow the injunction of Allah and they will tell you what is that because who people have refused to follow the injunction of Allah, you people have refused, you have decided to follow your wills and caprices, you have decided to follow news that you do not know anything about it, you will just be following them like animal that is following a shepherd. Allah tells us that we have to be very careful in what we do so that we do not oppress other people based on your ignorance. We pray Almighty Allah to help us to be touch bearer of Islam in wherever we find ourselves. We also have have Almighty Allah to guide us so that everything we do it should be in accordance with your will and will in what it is. Thank you.